Um, it's a privilege <coughs> to be here and um, it feels a little bit special as uh, Research America put forward such a challenge to all of us, is a disease-free world within reach? A very ambitious question. Well, from a science perspective, the opportunity has never been greater to take on such a bold challenge and ambition. We are at true crossroads for scientific innovation, from basic science to clinical medicines to technologies that allow diagnostics or digital devices to be used in healthcare. While we can dream about cures being within reach, it is not a um, contribution from one group. So the R&D ecosystem must commit to further acceleration, working together over boundaries. And it is a real opportunity today, in this very exciting time, to start the journey with a more swift speed. If we just look at the few years that have passed, we have seen some example of what we can accomplish. Triggered by the genomic revolution, we have seen extraordinary gains in treatment of what was a chronic progressive and fatal disease, hepatitis C, by novel antivirals and the pioneers among several pharmas contributed by G Gilead. We have been among, uh, in Pfizer among several American pharma that have advanced novel targeted therapy for cancer. Uh, and we have seen in parallel the revolution of immune oncology. So while we have been very proud of being mastering the cell cycle to give new hope for cure in the future for breast cancer patients. And I note that I'm sitting next to a fellow colleague from J&J &J that have made fa fabulous contribution in blood cancers. And more recently, in, in the unleashing of the immune system against tumors, we can see an armamentarium of opportunities that give hope that a disease-free disease world for some patients may be within reach. We have patients that are born with faulty genes and have a projected um, life of uh, disability and possible fatal outcome. We have been proud to be partnering with American biotech companies to advance gene therapies, and we've seen very recent accomplishment in clinical, giving hope that we may be able to cure some of those genetic difficult diseases. But how can we rally, move faster, be bolder and aim high for a disease-free future for more and more patients. I had an opportunity uh, to participate in the Blue Ribbon Panel hosted by former Vice President Biden. And I was inspired by the moonshot goal of a decade's worth of progress in five years. Well, it may be an opportunity to start a journey to stretch beyond that to think about more than a decade's worth of progress in less than five years, but for many more patients than just cancer patients. And, and that is the real opportunity here, um, to take that inspiring, bold move, but to think about the many patients, whether it's in neurological disease, musculoskeletal disease, psychiatric disease, infectious diseases, all of them should be um, benefiting from us taking this bold goal on. So what do we need to achieve in order to make it happen? We need to address new development paradigms. We need to ensure sustained find funding levels for NIH and a regulatory system built for the 21st century. And of course, that these discoveries of new medicines has a healthcare system that ensures great patient access. Well, when not all pieces are in place, setbacks may occur, and actually, quite recently in Europe, the first approved gene therapy was pulled off the market due to lack of access, um, sufficient reimbursement, and investment around that therapy. So it really are on, on all of us to ensure that we deliver for patients an integrated system of innovation. We have tried to up our aspiration and aspire now to deliver up to 30 approvals of new medicines in the next five years. We're rethinking in our company the development process to bring therapies much faster forward and hopefully to see on average that we will see medicine instead of close to 10 years development time, maybe five years of less. We're looking at ways to perform small 
efficacy studies early in the clinic to identify the compounds that seems to have the problem is or to fail fast. And to look at ways to leverage big data that allow us to see new, new patterns, get new insights to human disease so that we can select the right medicine for the right patient with a much better precision. Well, to achieve a, more than a decade's worth of progress in, in less than five years, we need to work together to make sure that NIH can continue its role as a catalyst in the innovation system, to foster great basic research that can provide medical insights, and move forward consortium initiatives that bring everyone to the table, such as Accelerating Medicine Partnership that has been launched, the Cancer Moonshot, and all of us, the one million American Precision Medicine Initiatives. I have had a personal opportunity to work with Francis Collins that I think will attend later today and see the drive and commitment when we come together to take on as a team these extraordinary important challenges. At the same time, NIH needs to be able to, through their grants across America, foster next generation of science talent so that our journey doesn't last the decades, but many decades and last centuries. Today, the funding that has happened over the last few years in public and private investment have made US a leader in biomedical R&D, and more than half of the thousands of medicine in global development were originated in US. But we need to make sure that the past success becomes an even greater success of the future, and to have a well-funded public sector working with a vibrant private sector that has the right policies and incentives to succeed. And all of you are so important in making this happen. When I think of a decade's worth of progress in less than five years for all patients, not just for cancer patients, FDA has done a pioneering effort in breakthrough therapy pathways that has benefited many cancer patients and some rare disease patients. But if we today embrace the broader goal of aiming to achieve the same aspiration for all patients, we haven't seen the same impact of FDA to accelerate development and regulatory approval for other patient groups, patients that suffer from pain, neurological disease, diabetes, infectious diseases. We also would welcome very much uh, the FDA to partner with NIH and with companies to make sure that we can find novel surrogate markers that are predictive for disease and can allow new medicines that show promise to come much faster to patients in urgent need and not have years of wait for therapies based on traditional uh, ways of getting approvals that are very lengthy. FDA is our steadfast partner in drug, drug development with a lot of deep expertise. We are encouraged by the early work of Commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb that I think is also attending here today. And we hope the work of Dr. Gottlieb with the agency will help to implement the provision of the 21st Century Cures Act to further accelerate regulatory and development of new medicines. To achieve more than a decade's worth of progress in less than five years, we also need to think about the critical role of electronic medical records. In this digital age where information needs to be gathered and aggregated, we still have a very fragmented system. What if FDA and NIH medical providers and insurance companies would come together and unite around one universal database that could give patients the deep insight of all the data to share with our physicians or others that participate to provide innovations over time. But we need, of course, to balance that with patient privacy and security. Finally, this wonderful aspiration, let's think about what it could mean for patients and outcomes. For the many patient groups that would really feel that it's a disease-free world within which is coming closer and that there is hope of continuous progress. We need equally to be open-minded and creative to ensure access while ensuring a healthy reimbursement ecosystem that allows for con continued investment in R&D. Access to leading care is one of the tenants of the healthcare system in this nation, and we need to make sure that all of these promising discoveries of new medicines become as soon as possible available for every patient suffering from those diseases. More than a decade's worth of progress in less than five years, it can happen for many more patients, 
if we can work together as a large team. We have come together in, in this nation many times to take on extraordinary challenges, and we've done things that have been impossible anywhere else. And when I look across this room, I can see many brave, committed leaders that want to join uh, our peers of the past that made extraordinary accomplishments. So I do look forward to great conversation today, how we can do it together and to take on the challenge of making steps forward to this fees-free world within which faster. Thank you very much.